Namaste and welcome back to the DSA classes. My dear friends, today we are going to be discussing another very important question and a very unique question in arrays called as leaders in an array. Now why is this question unique? Let me explain the question first to you. Okay. So let us assume this is an array given to me. Now in this array there are few elements which can be called as leaders. Now what is a leader I will explain. But there are few elements which can be considered as leaders. You must identify such elements which are leaders and you must print them. Then naturally the next question that comes to your mind will be, Sir, what do you mean by a leader? First and foremost, please explain this to us. I am bringing up the definition of a leader element here. An element is a leader. If it is greater than all the elements to the right side and the rightmost element is always a leader. Now what does this mean? Going by this definition, Let's start with 8. Is 8 a leader? If 8 has to be a leader, then all the elements to the right of 8 must not be greater than 8 or must be lesser than 8 or 8 must be greater than all the elements to its right. However you want, you can phrase it. Now, the next element itself is 11. 11 is greater than 8, which means 8 is not a leader. Now, let's look at 11. Look at all the elements to its right. 5 is lesser than 11. Great. 11 is equal to 11. 7 is lesser, 6 is lesser, 3 is lesser. Now you may just believe that this 11 is a leader but it is not a leader because there is an element which is equal to it. There must not even be an element which is equal to it. Every element to the right should be lesser than it or greater than all elements to its right. Obviously this condition is not satisfied. 11 is not a leader. Next 5. Look at it. 11 is greater. There only condition gone. 5 is not a leader. Now look at 11. 7 is smaller, 6 is smaller, 3 is smaller. So 11 is greater than all elements to its right. So this 11 is a leader. Print it. I hope you are able to think. Next, next element 7. Look at all the elements to its right. 6 and 3. All of them are lesser than 7. Oh, 7 is a leader. Print it. Look at 6. Look at all the elements to its right. Only one element is there which is lesser. So 6 is a leader. Print it. And the definition itself says that the rightmost element is always a leader because there are no more elements to its right, which means it is greater than all the other elements to its right because no elements are there, which means 3 is also a leader. So what is the output? 11, 7, 6 and 3. This must be our output. Quite simple, quite straightforward, right? Let's take another example. <clears throat> Assume this is the array which I have. 50, 60, 70, right? So you can see it is sort of sorted in the ascending order. Now if it is sorted in the ascending order, common sense will tell me that 50 next element will be greater which means this can't be a leader, 60 next element will be greater which, can't, which means this can't be a leader, 70 is the last element. There is no more elements after that and the rightmost element is always a leader which means 70 is the only output. Which means in a sorted array in the ascending order only the rightmost element will be the leader. Simple. Let's take another example. Look at this. 100, 90, 80. Now this is also sorted but in the descending order. If it is sorted in the descending order, would you agree every element is a leader? Because if it is sorted in the descending order, every element to its right will be lesser. Every element to its right will be lesser. Every element to its right will be letter, lesser which means 190, 80. In other words, every element is a leader. I hope how to identify a leader has become crystal clear to all of you. Okay, now let's go back to the original line. Now let's talk about a solution guys. Now first let's not think of an optimized solution. Let's think of a naive approach, a simple approach to solve this. Now think about this. What I would say is I am going to create a variable i which is going to begin from the starting of the array. Okay. i's duty is to check whether that element it is pointing to is a leader or not. Now for i to check whether the element it is pointing to is a leader or not it needs to check all the elements to its right and see whether all the elements to the right is lesser than it. I hope you're able to think. If all the elements to the right is lesser than it, uh, the ith element, then 100% i element is a leader. Okay. So how am I going to do this? Very simple. I'll run a loop. I'll tell for i beginning from 0 and every element I should check whether it's a leader. So obviously this would go to the end. So to the length of a. Now inside this, I don't know whether the ith element is a leader or not. I need to check. So what I will do is, I will create a variable called as isLeader. Okay. 
Now this is a boolean variable which means it will store true or false. I will assume that the ith element is a leader. I will assume. So what I will do is I will make it as true. That's what I'm showing. This is this leader and initially make it as true. So I'm assuming that the ith element is a leader. I'm assuming. Now after this I must write such code which will verify my assumption for me, which will validate my assumption for me, whether really ith element is a leader or not. So how would you do it? Very simple. Now what I will do is, I am going to appoint another variable called as j. j is always going to start one step ahead of i. Now j's duty is to go from one step ahead of i till the end and check whether every single element to the right of i is lesser than i element. How are able to think? Or in other words, check if there is any element which is greater than or equal to the i element. How are able to think? Because if any element is greater than or equal to the i element, then i element is not a leader. So see, I'll run another loop for j starting from the first element, or uh, sorry, starting one step ahead of i, i plus 1. And it should go till the end, so till the length of a. Now inside this, what will I do? Very simple. What I have to do is, for example, I want to check if 8 is a leader. j started one step ahead of i. Now I will check if in case this jth element is greater than or equal to the ith element. If it is greater than or equal to the ith element, then 100% ith element is not a leader. So my assumption is wrong. So see what I will do. If in case a of j is greater than or equal to is greater than or equal to a of i if it is greater than or equal to a of i this condition is true then i know ith element is not a leader so what i will do is inside this leader i assumed that it is true but now i know it is not true so i will make it as false now tell me guys if this element itself is greater than this is there any need for me to go and check any of the other elements? Meaningless, why should I waste execution of my uh, program? Why should I check? This element itself is greater means this is not a leader. How does it matter whether other elements are greater than or equal to? So what I will do is, if this condition is true, I will make this leader as false. And I want to come out of this loop. Forcefully, I want to come out of this loop. How will you forcefully come out of a loop, sir? By breaking the loop. How to break the loop? Break keyword. How are you able to think? I will break out of the loop. I will break out of the loop and I will come. And now what I have to do is, I have to check whether my assumption was right or wrong. How will I check whether my assumption is right or wrong? By looking at what is there inside this leader. If what is there inside this leader is true, then my assumption is right. If it became false, then my assumption is wrong. So see what I will do, I will come out of the loop and I will check if in case is leader, is it equal to true? If it is true, then that ith element was a leader, print it, print a of i, how are you able to think? Now I am within a loop, i moves forward. If i moves, if i moves forward, then this is how to look. <clears throat> now I want to check whether this is a leader. Now. I will assume that this is the leader, I will make his leader as true. Next, j will always begin one step ahead of i. j's duty is to check all the right side elements and see is there any element greater than or equal to this. Now I will start checking. Tell me, is a of j greater than or equal to a of i? No. No means this condition is not true. Even now I can assume i is a leader. j moves forward. I will check, is a of j greater than a of i? No. Is it equal to a of i? Yes which means I found an element which is equal to, that is also a condition to realize that I is not a leader. Moment this condition becomes true, I come inside and I will fix my assumption by telling his leader is not true, it is actually false. I will make it as false. No need to go to the end. I want to break out of the loop. I will break out. And I will come and I will check. Is his leader equal to true? No, it is false. If it is false, I will not print it. If it is false, I will not print it. I am within a loop. I moves forward. Now 5. Okay. J and next I will assume 5 is a leader. I will make his leader as true. Next J begins one step ahead of I. That's what you have told in this loop. 
Now I will check if in case jth element is greater than or equal to ith element. Yes, it is greater. The moment it is greater, you know it's not a leader. Make his leader as false, break out of the loop. Come and check. Is his leader true? No, it is false. Don't print it. You are within a loop. I moves forward. May assume the ith element is a leader. Make it as true. J starts one step ahead of I. Check if the jth element is greater than or equal to ith element. No, it is lesser. Very good. Move j forward. Check if the jth element is greater than or equal to ith element. No. Great. Move forward. Check if jth element is greater than the ith element. No. Great. Move forward. J goes outside. When j goes outside the boundary, this loop finished. I will come out of the loop. I didn't break. I automatically came out of the loop. When I automatically come out of the loop, and if this condition never executed, it means this leader is true. My assumption was right. Check. Is this leader true? Yes. Yes means ith element who is a leader print. So if I print it in my output, first output is going to be 11. And yes, 11 is a leader. I am within a loop, move i forward. Ne next, assume that ith element is the leader, make it as true. Next, j begins one step ahead. Check is it greater than or equal to? No, move j forward. Check if it is greater than or equal to? No, move forward. j goes outside, you will come out. Is leader is true. If it is true, I is a leader element, print it. 7 is the next output. Next, I moves forward. 6. Assume 6 is a leader. Next, J starts one step ahead of I. Check if the Jth element is greater than or equal to I. No. No means great. Move forward. J goes outside. If J goes outside, come out of the loop. Check if the is leader is true. Yes, it is true, which means this Ith element is a leader, print it. 6 you will get. After which, next, I moves forward. And I will get uh, 3. I will assume 3 is a leader. I will make it as true. J move starts one step ahead of I. One step ahead of I means starting only J is outside. Which means loop will never execute. Come outside. If loop never executes and you come outside, it means you are at the rightmost element. And rightmost element is always a leader. Check if it is a leader. Yes. Yes means print it. So the last output is going to be 3. Any confusion till here? Very easy to do. Now, if you analyze the time complexity of this, you will realize there is a loop. Inside a loop, there is another loop. So, nested loop. Now, you know, outer loop is going from zeroth element till the last element. So, if n is the size of the array, n times it will execute. Whatever is inside, yes, once from the second element you are starting, but can you approximately say n times only it is executing? So, what is the time complexity? The outside loop is also n times, inside loop is also n times, which means it is big O of n into n or n square. Square, n square time complexity is very bad. And of course it will be bad because it's an unoptimized approach. I didn't think of any optimization. This is the first approach that comes to my mind. But it will work. Will it work really? Let's write some code and check. All right, it's time for us to write some code. Now, as you can see, I have an integer array A and I need to print all the leaders in this array. So, what I'll do is I'll create a static function, okay, and uh, which returns uh, nothing, so void because I have to just print it. And uh, here I will call this as leaders uh, in array. So, leaders in array. And what this will accept is an integer array A. Okay, I'll put the array brackets. Now, next, uh, inside this, what I will basically now be doing is, I will write the core logic, which is, first run a loop i, which should begin from the first element till the last element. So, for uh, int i equal to 0, i less than a dot length, i plus plus. Okay. Now, I will come inside this and I will assume that the ith element is a leader, I will assume. So, for that I have to make that is leader variable true. So, boolean is leader I will create is leader and inside that I will store true. I am assuming that it is true. Okay. Always leave space after assignment. That is good coding conventions which you must follow. Okay. Both sides left and right you have to leave. Next I will come and after this what I am going to now do is I will now run a loop which is j 
which will start one step ahead of i and check all the elements to the right and see if all the elements are lesser than the ith element. So what I will do is I will tell for int j starting from i plus 1. So wherever int j is equal to i plus 1. And next I will tell j less, j should go to the end. So a dot length and I will tell j plus plus like this. Next inside that what I will do is now simple check if in case now a of j a of j is it greater than or equal to a of i so if any element j is pointing to which is any right element is greater than or equal to a of i then condition is failed so come inside if and first thing is I assumed it is true I will make it as false by telling is greater equal to false equal to false. Hmm? Great. Next, I will press enter. Now tell me if if at all this condition is true, then it i is not a leader. Now why should I check any of the next elements? Why should I loop? I want to break out of the loop. So I will break. Okay, great. Now if I break, see I will come outside the loop. So I will come here, press enter. Now I will come here now I want to check whether really ith element is a leader or not. Ith element will be a leader only if this is leader is true. If it was not a leader, it would have become false. So I'll just check if in case. Is leader, is it equal to true? If it is equal to true, then I know i is a leader. I'll come inside this. I'll tell sys out and uh, I will just print a of i because ith element is a leader. That's pretty much it. So, this is our code, right? Now, will this code work is the question. Let's execute and check. Hmm? For that, I have to first call the function. So, I'll just come here and uh, I'll just call, uh, you know, array. So, yeah, array. Just press control space, complete. So what did we call the function? Leader is in an array. Yeah. Just type leaders and complete it. <clears throat> I'll pass a to it. Any confusion? It's anyways going to print, so I don't have to really return or collect anything. Let's just execute. If in case I execute, one can clearly notice that uh, 11, 7, 6, and 3. Yes, 11, 7, 6, and 3 are the leaders. So it works. But it's big O of n square time complexity. Can it be made better? Can it be optimized? Let's explore. All right, my dear friends. Now, let me show you a more optimized approach. Okay. Now, I'm bringing the definition of leaders here. If you read the definition, especially the last line, I'm highlighting it. Rightmost element is always a leader. Correct? Now, think about it. Instead of trying to find leaders from the beginning till the ending, what if I try to find the leaders from the ending to the beginning? I feel my life will become easier. Now you must be wondering, sir, how will your life become easier? Watch it. First and foremost, this last element, the last element it means the element of the last index. We know it is a leader. So what I will do is, I will create one variable called as current leader. And whichever is the element at the last index, I will take that and I will store it inside current leader. So 3 got stored. Now I know 3 is a leader because the definition tells me so. So what I will do is take the last element, put it inside current leader and I will just print it as output. So first output 3 is a leader. Okay. Now that has code if I should write. See in array A, last index means what? Length of n minus 1. That is the last index. Whichever element is there, store it in current leader. Print the current leader. One leader you have printed. Now what I will do is, I will run a loop guys, okay, from the second last element. So I start from the second last element and it will go till the beginning. So that's what I'm writing for. I beginning from second last element means length of a minus 2. Length of a minus 1 will give you last element, minus 2 will give you second last element. I hope you're able to think. Minus 2 to 0. I hope you're able to think. Now, sir, what will you do inside this? Now, I want you to use a little bit of common sense. Now, if in case the ith element is greater than the current leader, 
if the ith element is greater than the current leader then don't you think that is also a leader because you are now going from right to left if this element was greater than the uh, current leader it means all the elements to its right is lesser or it is greater so all i have to do is check if in case the ith element is greater than the current leader now that is what i'm writing if in case a of i is greater than the current leader then i have found a new leader would you agree i have found a new leader so what i will do is the ith element i will update it as the current leader which means ith element is now 6 current leader becomes 6 and that is what as code i am showing a of i store it in current leader print it if i print it next i will get output as 6 so i got 3 then i got 6 now watch it i will move backwards now again check if in case if in case the ith element is it greater than the current leader if ith element is greater than the current element would you agree that is also a leader because if ith element is greater than the current leader which is 6 it means it was also greater than 3 otherwise 6 would have never been the current leader as simple as that so i will check is ith element greater than the current leader yes yes means i found a new leader update current leader with the ith element current leader becomes 7 print 7 how are you able to think you are within a loop i moves backwards again check is the ith element greater than the current leader yes which means that is also a leader if so update update the new leader or the current leader it becomes 11 then all you have to do is print the current leader 11 gets printed now you are within a loop i moves backward now check if in case the ith element is greater than the current leader no it is 5 5 is not greater than 11 if it is not greater than 11 it means elements on the right side of 5 are greater than or equal to 5 that is what it means how are you able to think as simple as that and hence i will do nothing this condition will not execute i will not print i will do nothing even now my current leader is 11 only i will move backwards now i will check if in case the ith element is it greater than the current leader no it is equal to equal to also means it's not a leader is it greater no no means condition will not satisfy i'll not update current leader i'll not print it i moves backwards i'll check is 8 greater than the current leader no no means do nothing i moves backwards it goes outside the boundary stop and by the end of it have you printed all the leaders yes how is this more efficient how many loops are there just one it's moving from last element to first element or it is moving through the entire length of the array if length is n it is executing n times which means the time complexity is big o of n not n square n square became n right quadratic became linear that is also good enough for me that is also good enough for me how are you able to think so definitely this is a much more optimized way of doing things now i am quite sure all of you are capable of going and writing this as code in fact as an assignment i want you to go write this as code because it is really very simple there is really nothing to it just go modify your code any confusion till here great i hope the leaders in an array program is clear to each and every one of you let's catch up in the next class with even more interesting programs till then take care